Now this uh, is five marker. I think this is a hard question. I think you've got to be really quite confident that you know what you're doing and you know what direction you're going in to uh, to solve this problem. Um, but nevertheless, whatever you do, uh, if you if you don't if you're not very confident, you can probably still score uh, three or four marks uh, by just sort of pushing in the right direction. So you're told that this line is a tangent to the curve, and that information alone, we're told, is enough to find the value k. There are two methods you can use. Here's one of them. And this is to spot that the gradient of the curve must match the gradient of the line at a particular point. Um, because if it's a tangent, that's, that's what it means, isn't it? Um, if something's a tangent, then its gradient must be the same as the curves at a particular point. Well. Working with that then, um, if we just write down the curve, uh, but with y as the subject, that will allow us to differentiate it to get dy by dx. If we're dealing with gradient of curve, we're definitely going to need dy by dx. So I've rearranged it to get y on its own. If we differentiate, we just get half x, which is quite a nice and simple um, expression. If we do the same sort of thing with the line now, um, rearrange that to make y the subject, and we can spot then that the gradient of the line, which is minus a fifth, must be equal to the gradient of the curve for a particular x value anyway. So we can set those two expressions equal to each other to work out for which x value is it the case that the curve's gradient matches the line's gradient. So setting that equal to each other gives us x is minus two fifths. So what else do we need now? Well, if we're trying to find the value of k, we know the value of x where that's uh, the, the, where it's tangent. We just need to find the value of y where it's tangent. Well, if we take the value of x that we've got and substitute into into well not into there but into here. We can work out the value of y from the curves equation. So y is equal to a quarter of x squared, take away 5 over 2. And if you bang that in your calculator, you get y is minus 123 fiftieths. These are not numbers that um, instill confidence, really. If you get nice, easy integer numbers, you know you're sort of on the right track. But here, you don't really get that affirmation. That's why you've got to have the confidence uh, to, to score in this problem. So now we have x and we have y, we can substitute those into here to work out the value of k. So just go through the process of that, substitute, solve, you get minus 12.7. Again, pretty ugly answer. I'll show you a second method which might ring a little bit more true to you, to what you might do in the, in the exam. Um, this is potentially, you might think of this as a more sophisticated method maybe. This is where we spot that if it's a tangent, then the intersection of the curve and the line should lead to a repeated root of some quadratic equation. So when a curve meets or inter interacts with a line, the line could miss the curve altogether like that. It could be a tangent to it, which is where you get a repeated root, or it could strike the curve in two distinct places. Obviously, we're interested in this case where it's a tangent, so a repeated root. So again, um, this time I've, I've made x the subject of the line. The reason I've done that is because um, I, mean, I, I could have used y as well, but I think it's going to be easier, given that x, um, the, the, this expression here doesn't have any fractions in. When we made y the subject of the line, it had these fractions in. Um, and I just didn't really fancy um, substituting that into here. I could have done, maybe it would have been easier because I wouldn't have had to square. Actually, in hindsight, I probably should have done that. But anyway, I'm, I'm here. I've made x the subject of the line. I'm going to substitute that into the curve. Why am I doing this? Remember, we're trying to find the intersections. The question is about intersection of the curve and the line, so we need to solve these simultaneously. And that's the process we're going through. So x squared, take away 4y equals 10, just like here. Expand, and then simplify. 
And let's just slow down a little bit here. I'm going to go back and just pace through that a little bit more slowly. Um, I've got 25y squared from here. And then look. I've spotted that I've got y's here and y's here. So altogether I'm taking away 4 lots of y and I'm taking away 10k lots of y. I've grouped those together because it's going to allow me to write this whole thing as if it's a big quadratic in y. I've also got two constants, which I'm going to combine into a single constant using brackets. I've got a constant bit here, k squared, and I've got this 10 on the other side of the equation, which is obviously minus 10 if I move it over here. So I've got my number of y squared, my number of y's, and my constant. And now, if we knew the value of k, and uh, we'd have a quadratic in y here, and quadratics in y is either going to give us two distinct values, which is this line here, a repeated root, which is this one here, or no roots, which would be this line here. We want repeated roots, and repeated roots is where the discriminant is exactly equal to zero. So we need to now do that. So b, the value of b is this whole thing here, minus brackets 4 plus 10k, and we need to square that. Now, when we square, it's going to become positive anyway. That's why I've ignored the fact that this is a negative, because I know it's going to be positive. So b squared minus 4 lots of a times c. And again, I'm simplifying as I go here. So 4a is 4 lots of 25, so 100, um, and then c which is just that whole bracketed thing there from here. OK, I'm going to have to expand again. This is a very complicated question, so expand uh, this bracket and this one. Let's see what we have. Speed things up a bit. So 16 plus 80k plus 100k squared from expanding the first bracket. Take away 100k squared and then plus 1,000. All equals zero. Then we'll spot that we've got a plus 100k squared, take away 100k squared, which is nice, because that reduces us just to a single value of k when we finish solving this. If you carry on solving that, you get k indeed is equal to minus 12.7, uh, as we had before.